Professor S. Anand Ramakrishna is a distinguished physicist specializing in optics, photonics and condensed matter physics. With over two decades of experience, he focuses on metamaterials, plasmonics and nanostructured materials, pushing the boundaries of photonic properties for cutting-edge applications. Currently a professor at IIT Kanpur, his work bridges theory and experimentation, exploring negative refractive index, plasmonic surfaces and near-field imaging. A recipient of the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar Prize and the Young Scientist Medal, his innovations continue to shape the future of materials science. I think I owe a lot of that to my upbringing at home. My father was very much into science. We had an unlimited supply of books at home and reading them, I didn't understand many things, but I used to have a fleeting knowledge of things, such things existed, you know, about many scientific, uh, you know, theories and so on and so forth. So the real turning point came in my 11th and 12th, when uh, I studied in Mysore, there, there we used to call it pre-university. So during those two years, as I was studying, uh, you know, I, I was studying just my texts and so on and a few good books. And then among one of them, I don't, uh, it, it was actually a book by CNR Rao and his colleagues at IIT Kanpur, who had written a book on chemistry. And there, the introduction to atoms and quantum mechanics was, I found it so attractive. I said, oh, that's what I want to do in life. I want to do, be doing physics. And that is when I decided to become a physicist. When I was finishing my PhD working on wave propagation in random materials, random highly scattering materials, the world was, you know, taken up by two papers by Sir John Pendry, one on artificial meta uh, magnetism in metamaterials and one on how metamaterials can enable perfect focusing and a perfect lens. And these two papers catapulted the entire field, started the entire field and brought it into public attention. And reading those two papers during my PhD days, I realized that's exactly what I wanted to be doing in the very near future. So I wrote to Sir John Pendry. Professor Pendry accepted me as his postdoctoral fellow. I was about to finish my PhD in those days. So after that, I just submitted my thesis at the Raman Institute and flew straight to London to join Professor John Pendry and his group and started working on metamaterials. So it's very important to understand that when the world of metamaterials broke out in about 2000, there were many confusions about it, fundamentally what it meant, and uh, there were a lot of confusions, fundamental confusions, fundamental questions that were being asked by most of the scientists. And in those initial many years, up to about 10 years, what was done was to clarify most of the fundamental questions and also explore the whole range of new set of material parameters that had been opened up by the understanding of, you know, negative uh, res material responses in metamaterials, whether it is magnetic, whether it is dielectric, whether it is chiral, bionisotropic, and so on. So all the scientists, we were merely exploring the vastness of this world that had been opened up, and that took about 10 years, till about 2010. Uh, after that, a lot of work started uh, happening in this area on applications. And these applications could be opened up only if you could actually make these metamaterials in the requisite quantities, in the requisite volumes and so on. If you talked about metamaterials at optical or infrared frequencies, they were all nanomaterials or near, you know, just about micromaterials, but really speaking, they are all nanomaterials, designer-structured nanomaterials. 
So a lot of effort in since 2010 onwards went into actually developing capability to make these across the world. People were developing new kinds of techniques, 3D printing at nano scale, what not, to develop these nano materials, micro materials, and even meso materials for uh, higher uh, freq- you know wavelengths like uh, smaller frequencies like microwaves, and simultaneously applications were being seriously explored. So a variety of applications started happening in the decade from 2010 onwards, 2010 to 2020. So many applications started happening across the world. I never uh, really ran after any award in my life. I had been trained by Professor Narendra Kumar uh, who, you know, always drilled it into me. The main thing to do is to do your work with utmost sincerity and seriousness. And that was the reward that one wanted to have in science, scientific work and in life itself. So what I found was that whenever I did the work sincerely, seriously, and uh, kept going at it over a long period of time, awards happened. And uh, it is not that I really wanted so many awards or I really hankered after them or anything like that, but it was just that the country has a system whereby the nation recognizes good contributions by scientists and that was happening. My main works were actually in the area of uh, anisotropic metamaterials where we did a lot of path-breaking work in, for example, obtaining the world's first anisotropic metamaterial fiber, optical fiber or uh, we worked on very highly anisotropic gratings made out of you know silver nano columns and so on and the other works i was very actively involved was in uh, developing very highly absorptive meta materials for the microwaves which simultaneously had very interesting infrared properties whereby you could control their emissivity so controllable infrared emissivity uh, anisotropic metamaterials and uh, highly absorbing metamaterials. These were some of the important projects that I was working on in those days. Teaching makes you the most educated. The teacher is, gets educated in the process of teaching because for each lecture of teaching that I do, I prepare for about three hours at the minimum. So as I prepare for those three hours, every time when I, even even if I'm teaching the first year undergraduate physics course, I realize so many subtleties that I have missed out until then. And the next time I teach it, I again rediscover even more subtleties or even more implications. And that is the real true joy of teaching because one gets much more educated through the process. The other thing is when students get back to you, and uh, after several years, come back and tell you how it was during your lecture, something, some, there was some aha moment for them whereby they got very interested in science or in technology and so on. And they made it their livelihood uh, working in technology. That gives you a lot of satisfaction. These are the two things which are absolutely nice about teaching, I would say. See, one of the things that I'm very passionate about is about conservation of energy because I believe this is one of the global challenges that we have presently and this is going to continue to affect the next few generations. Now, one of the things that has not got the attention that it should get is actually passive radiative cooling and cooling is something that takes huge energy across our nation and the world and that energy requirement is only increasing both by increasing use as well as the increasing global temperatures. So now there is a possibility of 
passive radiative cooling by rooftop cooling uh, systems yeah. whereby your rooftop is continuously emitting infrared to cool the rooftop while rejecting most of the solar yeah, influx so it doesn't contribute to heating but at the same time it contributes to a lot of cooling so such systems are uh, you know which involve a lot of nano materials and multi layer thin film systems are being understood for quite a few years and they are becoming more and more efficient in the last 5 years or so the challenge in all these systems is how do you scale up to large areas to cover large enough rooftops and so on so that is one question and simultaneously today we have a competing solar panels for the rooftop area which also need to be accommodated so the real research statement if you ask me what i'm most interested today is to look at this scale up of nano materials based rooftop cooling systems and to hybridize them it may be a systemic hybridization it may be a hybridization at the material level to hybridize them with the solar photovoltaics which compete with them for the same rooftop space the real major change that has happened is students in 1990s were more from the middle class upper middle class who used to come to iit today you find a lot of students from semi rural places across india even rural places sure. so the real change is that demographic change that has happened where do students come from you don't have an iit which is dominated by people from the metropolitans or the big cities you have an iit which is i would say today much more democratic in sense its uh, intake is more widespread from across the country so that is one positive aspect that has happened because it probably is more representative of the country but then society has undergone many changes over these years society's attitude to learning has also undergone many changes so in general when students come here they are not seeking to become scholars they are mainly looking to pick up those skills which potential employers will value and they are interested only in that they can't be faulted for that society has very high expectations out of them that they should get very high paying jobs so they are doing what is required for that uh, practical implementations cannot come about without theoretical understanding and theoretical understanding cannot arise unless some experiments have been done so one cannot live without the other so one has to necessarily have both again both because you see uh, i tried a few years of research without teaching research and management without teaching as a director of an institute but i was far happy teaching and doing research i took as a student unbridled freedom i took as a professor because one's involvement is on a daily basis grading examination papers and giving the grades because my temperament is that i need to be fair and i hate giving bad grades doing a lot more field work my inspiration comes from let's say scientists like cb raman jc bose my own supervisor uh, professor narendra kumar yeah these have been my inspirations throughout my life address problems which are genuine which are relevant to the society you live in and not just be a follower of science or engineering or technology that somebody in the west has done originate your own problems relevant to your society and solve them 